Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well still, and welcome to tonight's second half. Tonight's second half is a subscriber interview, and it is truly an awesome interview. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this subscriber interview, shall we? All right, this interview is with Luke. Luke, as many of you know, uh, five generations of his family have dealt with the dog man or what his family calls the walking wolves. They don't refer to him as dog men. And he kind of laughs that we call them dog men because all his life his family has called them walking wolves. Um, and Bigfoot, the woodsman. So Luke had his first experience with a dog man or walking wolf at the age of 18 and his children had seen them well younger than that uh it started out with his great grandfather saving his grandfather his grandfather dealing um, dealing with these creatures with his father as a child and then luke and then his children, all in Taylor, Mississippi. Uh, just recently, Luke's dad passed away, which really stinks because I was looking forward to meeting with him. Uh, he sounded just like a, just a super nice guy. But this interview is kind of a, a refresher because I am going to be interviewing Luke in the next week. Here, uh, I got a new number for him, and we are going to connect again. All right. So, um, what happened? All right. So you remember my um, friend um, a little while back that um, lives in Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah. Uh, has issues around his property with um, these um, walking wolves, and I went over there to help him with security cameras, and then. A mysterious team comes up and you know the whole everything that went on there so pretty much um, a few, couple months ago I had received a phone call from his wife saying that he went missing and um, she didn't know what to do and she called the cops and uh, she called the, the local authorities so what I did was um, I had took some time off of work I talked it over with my wife told her that I was going to go up, um, back up to Mississippi to see if I could help out find him Cause he um he went, cause he usually goes to uh Lamarck Park. Okay. Um, not too far from his house, he likes to um just hike and do whatever. Is that in Taylor? So he takes like a I think he, it's in Oxford, Mississippi. It's not about it's not far from Taylor at all. Right. They're literally next to each other. Yep. It's like just the next town, so they 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 cross each other. Okay. So um he usually keeps a nine mil with him. And takes like a, I think, a 40 ounce water. He goes for at least a couple of hours. He tells his wife where he goes. And uh, he always told his wife, he said he'd have never, because he's, he, he's very punctual. So if he doesn't come back by this time, that um, she needs to contact the local authorities 
which he did. So but they said that he had to be missing for uh, X amount of time before they could actually put a missing person out for him. So she reached out to me okay. and told me what the situation was. So I, I spoke to I spoke to my wife to her that um I have a few days that I'm gonna go up to um uh, Mississippi and see if I can help find him because I pretty much because we me and him used to go on the same route like um like we'll we'll go hiking and just mm, go miles and then there's one little thing we used to do like we used to um around the trees we used to mark it with a with a knife um with a uh, letter C and then U which stands for catch up. Like if each one of us like falls behind, so we look for certain markings, chest level from a tree, okay. and that's how we pretty much um, were able to track each other. So um, I pretty much told my wife about what my plans was, and she was totally against it. And um, like we we had an argument, and then she told me like the night of her, uh, not the not the night, the morning of her encounter, that um, when they ditched her they kept circling the car and one actually came across the car um the window and pressed his face against it which caused her to like freaking pretty much like soil herself right so that part she had left out and then she said that um it had an intent of like i can get you when i want you but we're just gonna wait so that's when i came through and then everything happened and uh I was able to get her to safety, but you know, when I came back to the car, it took my kids' clothes, his urine, all that stuff in the car. So, so I ended up having to convince her because um, he's been my friend for a long time, like maybe give or take, uh, maybe five or ten years after, no, about five years, five or ten years after, um, me losing my friend. Okay. Because there was a convention over in my town, and he came over, and um, we about this werewolf type convention, and we was just interested in it. And we just like chopped it up and started talking, and became friends for like about been friends for about fifteen years almost now. So go hiking and, and just the whole bunch of stuff. So I was able to convince my wife to um, that I'll go up there. That I was only going to be gone for a few days. And I was going to stay at um, my friend's wife's house. So when I got in my car, I drove, I filled up the tank. I took a couple of my um, my guns with me. I took my kel KSG. I took my Rock Auto um, 10 mil, and I took my BCM Reese AR just in case. That you know, I don't know what to expect over there because it's been a long time since I've really been back over there. Right. So it was so from Maryland to um to about Mississippi is about like fourteen hours and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a but haul. I did it and I, I both. Yeah, I, I I made the I made the drive in ten. Nice. So I go to, I go to the house. I meet up with her. She's hysterical, and now it's been almost a day. Um, actually, it's been a day since he's been missing a day and a half. So he just went out and one day. He I, he went and said, "Hey, to his wife, I'm going to go for a hike." That's all it was. Was he was just going on a hike? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's going. He, he usually he goes on a hike about once a week, once once to twice a week. Okay. Just to get the blood flowing and stuff like that. So right. Just to get it was some nothing unusual for him to do. Right. Yeah. Okay. So he he he's gone for a couple of hours. So I went there, I talked to her and stuff like that. And she said that he just went on his, he was going on a usual hike. He took his, he took all his, uh, his nursery things that he takes on a hike. And I asked what park did he go to? Does he go to the usual park? And she said that he does. So I asked her about what, what did the law enforcement do? They said that, um, they sent, they went out there looking in the areas that, um, she told them to look. They had the canines. They said that they, they caught a hit. And then once the they got to an area where the the park got dense and the dogs just stopped in their track, they didn't want to go any further. Mm. So they wasn't able to complete complete the complete the um the whatchamacallit. And um so they had to come back and bring new dogs and it was the same thing with the new dogs. They didn't want to go in that particular area. Mm. 
So she asked what area it was, but they wouldn't tell her. So then um, I rest, I sat up and rest for like at least a a few hours, a couple of hours. And then I headed out to the park. Like that, because we, for the most part, me and him used to go on the same trails. So I followed the trails until I got to a certain area. And then I was actually able to see like certain markings and stuff like that, that he marked. So I followed it and then I reached the area where I think there were four stick and dents. I entered the area. So what I do is now, like I have these, um, I got like about 10 pounds of like poppers. Um, and um, I have a strap to my back. And as I'm walking, it drives like about 10, five, 10 of those when I'm in a certain area. Just, um, what I use that for is when then something steps on it, it makes a loud pop noise. Yep. So I can know, like, if anything is trying to sneak up on me. So I'm about, I go into the area where I believe the dogs want to enter, and it's a little bit dense, and um, things like that. So right now, I think it was about, like, maybe, give or take, 4 o'clock, 4. Sun is still out, but it's getting ready to set, so... I'm going in there. I'm following trails. I see, I see pieces of ripped clothes, um, running like um the, the terrain is like was running, and then something was chasing, chasing, and um, so it looked like he was being chased by something big. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. So I'm like about give or take a quarter of a mile in, and then maybe maybe a well. 50 to 100 yards, I hear poppers go off, so I turn around, but there's nothing there. So I keep going, I'm going, I'm going. So I stumble up this, 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 um, this, this embankment that steeps down. So I go down, I uh, slide down it. I follow, I follow, it, it goes like around the bend. And so I follow that bend and hear more poppers. So now it's starting to get darker. So I'm like, I'm thinking about, so now I'm faced with a dilemma. Do I turn around or do I continue? Right. Because honestly, I I wasn't going, I I went there not to retrieve somebody alive. I went there to retrieve a body. I'm going to be honest with you. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go like maybe a few hundred more yards. And then that's when I saw, I saw growing eyes on a milestone on my on my left hand side about maybe give or take about 50, 50 to 100 feet away in this brush. So I'm trying to make out what it is. So I'm trying to, I'm measuring the height because I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it's animal, maybe it's coyote, maybe it's a whatever, you know. It's not what I think it is. The height was taller than any known animal in the area. So I took out my, I took out my 10 mil and I, I chambered it around and I held it in my hand as I continued to walk. I had, I had what I was looking at in my peripheral. So as I got about another maybe 50 feet, there was a slope that went deep down. So I'm got my flashlight out because right now it's not dark though, but it's getting dark and I see I look down and I see like a I see like a leg and then it's covered and stuff like that. So when I went down there, I I saw a body. I'm thinking that the it was my friend's. So I thought he was dead at the time, but he wasn't. So I was able to get him up and like exhausted. Um, he sprained his ankle or injured his leg. His leg was swollen. His his ankle was swollen. And the way how the the embankment was, it was steep, so he couldn't climb out. Right. So <clears throat> I was able to, um, like, I gave him a boost, and I was because it's about maybe give or take. Um, when I at the bottom of the embankment to the top is about maybe eight feet, so eight feet or so. So I was able to um give him a boost and push him out. And then that's when I heard a, like a, a growl howl type thing. 
that and he's like, Oh no. And so I hear him say, Oh no, it's coming back. It came it came back. Oh shit. So long story sh- long story short, we had about at least about half a mile to freaking like get out the the dense wood part because that's how far in I had. Right. And by that time it's already dark. So I had a I had a lantern, I had a torch. Right now I had a I had, I took out my big gun. I'm like, yo, it came it, it I started hearing like um it went circling in us. It was more than one of them circling us. So what I would do is like like technically all hunters know you need to know the target that you're shooting at before you fire a shot. Absolutely. But I'm like, yo, no human is gonna be in this I made the deduction no human will be this far in at this time of night knowing that you have armed people so I just took the chance I said I fired a couple of shots not to hit the animal because when you hit the animal it's one of two things that's going to happen they run away or they attack and right now I was in a position to defend myself with my friend here if they attack so I, I shot it like over their head just to get the attention, so they, they ran off. Five five minutes, they come back. So now he's limping. I'm half home, trying to carry him out of there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So he falls. I have to drag him because he's literally out of energy. I'll tell you his, what he told me afterward. Yeah, yeah. But I'm out of energy, so he's out of energy. So I'm dragging him. I have to, since the fact that I'm dragging him, I have to put my AR back because I can't have my AR while I'm trying to drag, I'm dragging him. So I'm, I have my, um, the way I have my gun position, I have a, um, I have a holster, a front holster, a quick draw front holster. So okay. Right on your chest? I'm dragging him, dragging him, dragging him. Yeah. So I'm dragging him, dragging him, dragging him. I'm getting tired myself. So I'm like, I'm taking a minute or two. Then I hear them come back, so I have to quickly draw a fire another shot in the area, in the direction, have them go off. So, well, this been going on for like about 20 minutes, 20 minutes to half an hour. I finally get out of there and get out to the open field because um, majority nine acres of it is like open field, but there's a certain area that's just fucking dense as, dense as hell. So I get him out and stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, good. So I get him out. The car is not too, too far from there. It's like another 10, 15 minutes. So as I get him out, so I see them. I see three of them standing at the, air, the, um, the edge of the, um, the wood line. I see an all-black one, a brown one, and a light gray one. The all-black one was the biggest one, about seven or eight feet, red eyes, pissed off as hell. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't able to, I didn't think of, I didn't think of anything until I was able to get him out because my adrenaline was going. So right now I was in a fight or flight mode. So I was I was pretty much flight trying to get him to safety. So we was able to get him to the car, put him in the back seat, he took off. I had got him back to the um to the hospital. So he was dehydrated. He had a um, broken ankle, hmm. and um, pretty much he had to be put to sleep for a while because the, the stress and the exhaustion was too much, I guess, for his body to handle. So um, I had called his wife, told him that he was safe. So I do that. Police, all everybody shows up at the hospital to question me. What were you doing there? Uh, you're not a resident here. You blah, 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 blah. We can arrest you. Hmm. So I'm trying to tell them what was going on and stuff like that. Like, I'm actually, I used to live up here. I lived up here pretty much all my life. I just moved down to Maryland just a, a few years ago, a couple of years ago. <laughs> and then I'm actually, um, I'm actually a law enforcement. But they didn't want to hear that. They, <clears throat> so, and then what did you see? Got any pictures? I was like, ah. They asked you so if like, you had no, pictures? Yeah. Wow. Next week I had pictures. Because, um, was this just regular you, law enforcement? You, no. No. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. I already knew. I already knew who they were when I saw them. Right. So, 
And then think about it. When you, I don't know if you know, most times when you bring somebody in and you stay with the person, you got to sign your name in. Mm-hmm. So I signed my name in. So when they, I'm guessing when they saw who I brought in and they saw my name, they ran my name through the, through their system. Right. I think they knew who I was. Was it the same? You think oh, it was the same trouble. people that that bought your property from back it was in the a, day? It was a, it was a, yes, it was the same. It was the same agency, but different people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yep. Hmm. So, how long? Yeah, we how long? Forth. Sorry, really quick. How long? How long was it from you bringing your buddy into the hospital to them showing up? Thirty minutes. No kidding. That's quick. Wow. Thirty minutes. How far is that hospital from where you where your old house was? I'll give or take um, about twenty minutes. Okay. Because they bought that property and then they tore everything down, right? Do you think they have something set up in that? Yeah. In that den still. Honestly, they probably do because um, I'm pretty sure till today, till today, yo, they traverse that area because it's the quickest way for them to get to the uh, to the other side. Right. So it's like it just like happened to be that that property just was just smack that in the middle. So they didn't have no choice. They could go around, go the long way, just cut through here and just destroy whatever the hell's in their path. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, I was just curious of how like that's quick for them to get to wherever to you know what i mean to you so there has to have been some agents down there permanently you, you also have to think about it it's a hot spot so they they con- they constantly monitoring the area mm-hmm. especially when they they have a known area where they traverse on a on a seasonal basis you know right so sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i was just curious yeah. on that so your buddy you get they're asking you for pictures this and that and um, at that point, you're just like, I got no pictures. Man, yeah, so they asked for my phone. I was like, yo, you're not getting my phone. <laughs> I'm like, you need a warrant for my phone. So they was like, all right, you need to step out. So they had me step out. So they started questioning my friend. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? He just, yo, he can't even talk. Right. So they had to, the doctors had to, like, force them to leave and stuff like that or they'll be like i forget i, I forget how they word it though there are certain things that you can't they can't um government official law enforcement can't interrogate a a person that's in a hospital that's um incoherent if that makes sense yeah because all that does is um so they told them to come back in like a few hours or the next day or whatever so that's crazy. That's crazy that they wanted to like interrogate him because he's the victim. You know what I mean? There was no like law broken. Yeah, they, they don't care. Yeah, they do not care. See, what I learned from the position I'm in, whoever knows what is the enemy. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah, you could be a law by the citizen to the T. You stumble on some information that they don't want you to know, and then you're enemy of the state. They'll find a way to, they'll ruin your reputation, whatever. Right, right. That just scare you into not um releasing certain information, and they have the they have the power to do that. So, hmm. but yeah, he was in the home. He was in the hospital for a couple of days, so they let him out. And then um when they did release him, I went to go get him. I took him back to his house, and um I asked him what happened. So he pretty much told me that he he would usually go on his uh his routine of his um. Uh, his hike so it was just like any other day he went on his own hike <clears throat> going down the trail and stuff and then um it seemed like he felt had a felt um he had a feeling that he was being followed so he would pick up the pace and then he'll hear something moving behind him and then when he finally did see was moving behind him it's, it bluff charged him so he was he was running and then there was any chance he had um, to stop, you know, he would mark the trees to see whoever found them. So what it did was, it was a couple of them. They they was hurting him to a certain area so they can kill him. 
So pretty much what happened was they was hurting him, hurting him, hurting him. And it so happened he fell into this watch this um this little ditch type thing that he couldn't get out of. Right. But he was well positioned. So um every time one would come at him he'll fire his weapon. Which kept him at bay for a while. And literally when I came he was already down to his last three bullets. So um, once he ran out and he knew he ran out, he'd have been gone. So if I was there if I was there, if I did, if I got there a day later or even a few hours later, I don't think he'll be here. Yeah, it would have been a recovery. Yeah, so wow. He, he they had him. He was he was up. When I say he was up for hours, he didn't sleep. He didn't sleep. He he was his body. He was up for like he literally like twenty four hours, like trying to keep these things at bay. Yeah, to the point that his body just gave out on him. Like literally, he just gave out. He just passed out of exhaustion. The last time, I guess when he fired, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, you you had said like if you hadn't shown up, it would have been over, you know, for him after the 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 last couple of rounds that he had. But another thing is that it would have been over if he didn't have a firearm with him. You know, like that that right there yeah. shows that you know. If you're going out in the woods, you definitely should have. Uh, and and when I say protection, I don't mean a pocket knife or a stick. I, I mean a firearm. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's not bear spray. You, you're spraying lead. Well, not lead anymore, but you know what I mean. It's just that's uh-huh. that's crazy. Do you think? Do you think that was the spot where he fell? Was that that was that the kill zone? You think? Because it sounds like it would be. I think so. I think so. I honestly think so. Because you can't get out of that. Right. I mean, you had to help him. You can't get out of that. The only way, <clears throat> the only way I was able to get out of that, because I have a big hunting knife. Uh-huh. So I had to run, jump, stab into the ground, and pull myself up to the point that I can grab. To grab the top of it. Because if I didn't, honestly, if I didn't have my hunting knife, me being in shape, because I've been um actually in the gym taking Carl McGraw and I've been getting myself in a pretty good shape. Me being in shape, 6'2", 220 pounds, I wouldn't be able to get out of there. Right. And 100%. So, hmm. like I didn't, I didn't really stick around to see if I saw any carcasses or anything. My, I was just like, um, zeroed in on my friend, so. Right, right. No, it just but seems like the perfect the story, location. Yeah, so the story don't end there. So, so when we're talking, he tells me that and stuff like that. So I'm like, yo, what did you do for that to happen to you? Because I'm like, yo, I'm pretty sure they know who you are because if you traverse there, they watch you. So he told me like um, uh, a few weeks ago that um, something was around his property. So he went outside around the back and he, like, he fired shots at it. So I'm thinking that they got pissed and started like following him and was waiting for the opportunity to get him, which you found the perfect opportunity. So, right. So, and then, um, as we talking, I'm, um, I'm in their kitchen getting water. They're in the living room watching TV. I happen to look in the window and I see red eyes looking right back at me. So, and it was all black literally no bull shame to say this I pissed my pants yeah I pissed my pants I think it's a natural and, um, reaction anyway you know what I mean like I I was I was in a I was in I was in a state of shock not because I saw one of them, them them walking wolves it's the one that I saw that fucking shook me to my core the one from two three years ago and I I I think I think it was the same one, the all black one. That's just the same. <clears throat> just like it smiled at me, like I were, it gave me that smile. Like, oh, I remember you. Mm. It's like smile. So I told. So maybe five minutes later, when I was able, because when it, once it did that, it walked away. It, it wanted to make a point, and it, it made its point. Right. And once it walked away, I told them they 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 have to leave. They have to leave. They have to move. Because they're not going to leave. I, I told them that their lives are literally in danger. They have to move. 
So they're actually in the process of moving very, very far away. Not sure where they're going to move to. They got a couple of areas, Pennsylvania, uh, Maryland, or New York. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But they're in the process of moving right now. So, Nets. So once I came back, took the drive bag and stuff like that, you better give us the information we need. Your family's going to be hurt. Just a whole bunch of stuff. So I was like, I said to myself, like, I'm going to get myself unlisted and change my number again. So I changed my number. Right. So right now I'm rocking out with a new number. Um, <clears throat> when they called I mean, you, did they sound um, like professional or did they, I mean, did they, I already, I already knew when I get calls like that, cause <clears throat> I've, you know, I've told you I've got calls like that in the past. So I already know who it is. Right. And what they're trying to do, but it doesn't work on me anymore. Right. Only thing I do, I just change my number and just keep it moving. I'm like, if you really, if you want to battle with me, I'm like, you could bring it though, but I'm guarantee you, you're not gonna be walking away unscathed. Yeah, yeah. What about work? What they they don't no. nothing with that. What do you mean about work? Like, okay, so you work, work. Um, yeah. I mean, you work, yeah, in a, work. as a I ranger. I actually so. had. Um, I'm sorry. You work for the park system there in Maryland, so they don't they don't bother yeah. you that way, or? No, nah, they don't bother me that way. Okay. But I did have a. Um, I was looking into. Uh, you, mind you, I have a lot of um, missing persons um, cases up in my area, stuff like that. So I decided to like look into one case because I know the area where the person went missing. So. I decided to go there and things like that. And I realized that there's a lot of um, crawler activities over there. Really? I happened to see another crawler when I was there. So my thing is, the area where she went missing, if it, if it's, if one of those things got a hold of, of the, um, this one was a missing team. It, 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 I don't know, but it, it didn't look good though. Yeah. Cause I don't, I've dealt with I've dealt with Bigfoot. I've dealt with, I've dealt with walking wolves, but crawlers or whatever these things are are something new to me. Yeah. So I don't I don't know how to proceed. It's something that I have to learn learn or brush up on. Mm -hmm. These things are creepy, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think. I don't think that, you know, I was just thinking about when you were saying, you know, uh, that you went down there and for some reason, the thing about law enforcement, how they had the code names for like dog man, Bigfoot, you know, uh, black cow, black dog, this, this and that. And I'm like, I wonder what the, the code word for them things are. <laughs> you know, it's just, I, I mean, it's something that you're not that used to dealing with is, is or I yeah. mean they are and they just they really just kind of are very hush hush about it um it's I was actually thinking about you the other week uh I was looking at a couple of pictures of the Maryland goat man and I was like I thought about God, all your my, experience oh my god <laughs> That's one scary looking thing, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that your friends are right, man. I mean, that's that's insane. But right there is, uh, that's just validation that you really, when you go on a hike, you really need to have protection. And you know, you didn't you you didn't hit them with your rounds. You were shooting over and you know, using it as a scare tactic. Um, you know, I think that just having that noise and, and, you know, them knowing, Hey, that, that really could do some damage to us. It yeah, that could hurt. save people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hurts. you could save someone's life. I mean, even if you don't, you know, kill one it just to uh, get it away yeah, from you. Yeah. I'm in a position. I don't, 
I don't want to hurt these things. I don't want to shoot them. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want the drama. I don't want the beef. Right. And that's my that's my very 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 last resort. So like, if I see them, like if somebody's about to lose their life, then of course, I'm definitely gonna <laughs> unleash hell on them. But uh, yeah, absolutely. I just, at the end of the day, yo, you leave me alone, I'm gonna leave you alone. But once you cross into my territory. And then you're messing with people, innocent people, then I'm sorry. Depending on how dangerous the situation is, just depending on which one of us is going to walk out of here alive, you know? Right, right. So, um, but, like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to go that route because I'm not. You've already not, done that route, and you you figured out what happens. <laughs> Luke doesn't. Yeah, Luke doesn't on, win. One of those things. It, Lou got his behind whooped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I tossed around like a rag doll. The amount of power that these things have on like freaking one finger is like phenomenal. Yeah. Um, when you went, when you were walking your buddy out, and you hit that field, there was the gray, the brown, and the black one. Was that? Do you think that was the? Because that instantly popped into my head. And then when you had mentioned that the black it was one, the same so, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's us. It was, it was the same one. And I was, I didn't put that back. I didn't put that mom together until after that incident at the house. Mm, yeah. Cause the wheel was a distance away. I knew I didn't, it's not like I was like maybe 10, 15 feet. We was like at least about hundreds of feet, a feet away. Okay. I just, I, I saw it from, from a, from a good distance, but I saw the boom, the corn on the red eyes. I'm like, Oh, this is not good. Yeah, that's crazy. So, now, they, when they called they, you... They, they know what they're doing. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, when they, they know what they're doing, what? Uh, the, the the dog man? They know what they're doing. Yes, because they, they want to tag you out in the open. They need cover. Yeah. Because they, they, they know that they're vulnerable. So Ambush predators. They, I already knew that. Is that so? That's why I knew I had to make it out of there. Once I knew I made it out of there, for the most part, I'm safe. Um, but if I shot one of them and he pissed off, oh, they're going to follow me till they get me. Yeah. But due to the fact that I didn't hit one of them, I, I knew there was a good chance that I was going to make it out of life. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. You um, you saw that video that I posted today. Yeah, yeah, today. Um, But people will hear this tomorrow. Um. What was your take on it? Well, I know what your take was on it already, but you you had the same feeling I had. Definitely a walking wolf. Yeah, um, I looked at the video. I looked at the um, I looked at the, the prints. Uh -huh. You know, the prints. The prints wasn't exact. It wasn't human. It wasn't. It, it, it wasn't a, a Sasquatch. It looked canine, but it looked like it was also. It was the way that the 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 movements was like it was walking on two legs like it was bipedal yeah so even though it was um canine in origin that that only um affirmed from uh made me believe uh it pretty much confirmed what i thought it was when he when it led him to the tree and then there was no other prints around that tree mm -hmm. it went up in the trees and I'm pretty sure if you looked in that tree a little more, he probably would have saw what was in that tree. But then again, once you see something, you can't unsee it. So it was a good thing that he wasn't able to see what's in that tree. Yeah. And then once he went past to the part, and then he saw those eyes, and the way that the the head was positioned, like when I zoomed in on it, you could you could slightly see like a that was like a muzzle. Yeah. So and then the height. And then the height of it was hot. If you really look at it and look at everything around it, even though it's, it's nighttime and it's dark here, it's taller than any known animal in that area. Just by the, especially if you're an outdoorsman, you can tell just by looking at certain things. You can guesstimate a height like, oh, this is too tall to be anything normal. And he saw that. He's like, yo, he's not going to say that on camera, but he just knew it wasn't normal. Right. That's why he's like, and another thing is, if something normal isn't, a lot of normal things are afraid of humans. They don't want. They don't want problems with humans. Yeah, that a thing bear will turn around and walk away. Yeah, yeah, a bear will run that away. Thing, that thing, that thing, stared him down to the point that he got. He realized he almost got in the trance because he kept looking at it. Yeah. Like, oh, 
And then what broke his concentration because he had a, a, a branch break, yeah. a, a twig snap, or whatever, because something was coming on his rear. So these things are ambush predator. What they'll do is if they if they want you, they'll one of them will show themselves to you, yep. while the other one sneaks up on them. By the time it gets up on you, it's too late. Yeah, right? I, my thing is if you see one, know there's more than one around, especially if you're standing there looking at you. Yeah, yeah. There's not going to be. Yeah, Watch. if that one was just by itself, it wouldn't just stand there. That was perfect. Look at my eyes. Look at me. Keep looking at me while my buddy comes up behind you. And um, w when he was running, you heard him like he he's you know took out the the Lord's name, and I think that he actually had saw another one. Uh, but didn't catch it on camera because he was running, you know. Um, and it was yeah. But you think about it. I don't know if he caught it when he was running. There was other those other noises behind yeah. him when he was running. And yeah. it wasn't his son because his son was off to the side of him. Right, right. It, it was, was parallel like, like him. noise from in a distance. Yes, it sounded like something in the distance. Mm -hmm. Like it was very very faint, but I, I caught that. Yeah, it was. Because you got to remember these things. They live in the woods, so they, for the most part, they they're like three three to six hundred pounds, but they have they got special kind of paddings that absorb noise. So it's very rare that you're gonna hear them make noise, but when you do hear noise, you're gonna catch it. Mm -hmm. How about you gotta think about how they sneak up on you when you don't even know it? It's because their paddings, they're they're it's it's like ultra absorbent. Yeah. What did you think about that so growl? Able to move through the woods. Yeah, what, what did you think about the growl? Because, you know, what I, I think, heard... Honestly, the growl was a warning to get... Yeah. The growl was a warning to get out the area. Yeah. It was like, leave me alone, get out of here, or I will kill you. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people loved the video. They saw it. They were like, wow, this is amazing, you know. And then there was a few people that were like, oh, it's fake. Now, when I heard... You what think about it. What I heard that night... I when I, no, when I had my encounter the noises that they were making it, it didn't make any sense it doesn't sound normal these things do not sound normal they're you know they're not they're not what we are used to hearing as human beings you know um they they sound different than what we'd expect something like that to sound and that's why i think that growl yeah. and that noise was off it, it was very strange and like i said to you you know people were like uh you know it, it seems fake to me the guy he he has a TikTok account and it's based on ice fishing, fishing, hunting. You know he he spear fishes and makes videos that way. That's his shtick. It's not cryptids. He doesn't he doesn't care about cryptids. You know and like you said, you caught it. You said he he never once said what he thought it was because he didn't know what it was. Exactly. You know, like, oh, I think I got a dog man here or a Bigfoot. No, it's like, I don't know what the heck this thing is. Right. I've never seen I tracks know, I know like it's this. Not, I just know it's something that doesn't frequent here. Yeah. Yeah. So. That was a very A lot cool of people video. take it. A lot of these walking wolves have dog-like character, characteristics. And that knowing that is what will save your life. About, I'm about 80% sure when they growl at you, yeah, that's a warning to get away from me get far away from me. Mm -hmm. They're not ready to attack you, but the longer you stay there, is the, the higher the chances they will attack you. When they growl at you, they, they're giving you a warning. Like, I'm going to let you live if you can get out of here fast enough. Yeah. Because the ones that want to attack you don't growl at you. They just go to town. Because growling at you is going to give away the position. And for the most part, they ambush predators. Mm -hmm. the, only time, the only time they'll attack you head on and they really pissed about something. Right they really pissed about something but nine times out of ten they'll growl at you and get out my area and then when you don't get out the area they'll bluff charge you and when you don't heed to that bluff charge then they kill you mm -hmm. yeah they that, give you warnings that's and what i do, think you do have the rogues on it they do just attack people just for the fun of it right right yeah no i but, agree but most of them try to get you out the area yeah that's what I think was happening a couple of times when he was running and he'd kind of be like, oh, what, you know, he, he made that like, 
I mean, he was obviously, when he saw the eyes, realized, hey, it's time to get out of here to his kid. Um, and then... You want to know why? He saw the eyes. He saw the eyes, and he, he did a height analysis. Yeah. He did a quick height analysis. Any hunter can do a height analysis. Like, yo, this is not normal height for an animal. Right. Something is wrong here. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get the hell out of here. That's why I think his he told his kid not to take the shot because he was like, "Don't take that shot." Exactly. You know, he knew it was not a person. We don't know what it is. Right. Yeah, right. he knew it was not a person. I was not a person. He's a like, person would not do that. Yeah, he's like, that's way too right? tall to be a person. Don't take the shot because it's not coming at us. You know, if it starts coming at us, take the shot. But why? Why risk? taking the shot and making it upset and having it come after him, you know? That was definitely... You also uh, got to be careful with the bluff shots, too. The yeah. bluff charge. Yeah, I In think... a certain distance, you have to wait before you take a shot. Because if you take it, if they bluff charge and you take a shot and you hit them, yo, that bluff charge turns into a real charge. Right. That's another thing that people fail to realize. Yeah, it doesn't stop at I that think point. One, I think once they cross that, I uh, that, that 20, 20, 25 feet mark, that's when you try, that's when you take a shot. Yeah. yeah. But but if you if you take a shot past that point or nine pounds out of ten, that's a bluff charge and you just turned it into a real charge and now you're literally running for your life. Yeah. And then he finds the deer. Another thing is, you gotta think about it. Mm -hmm. let's, let's use common logic here, yo. Them things are those things them things are out apex predator. They run up to like fifty to sixty miles per hour. You think a normal human can outrun any one of these creatures? No. At any point in time, if they really wanted to get them, they would have got them. Oh, I ran. I hear stories. Oh, I ran for my life. Yo. I, I ran. So, I'm like, it was just torn with you. It wanted you to leave. It didn't want to kill you because it could have killed you any time. These things jump. These things jump a good 40 to 50 feet in one in one bounce. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they could be up on you in a matter of seconds. Yeah. You could have you could have a hundred yard head start, and they can close the distance within ten seconds. That's how fast these things are. Yeah, absolutely. So, but just just know if you survive, it's because they didn't want to kill you. And I think you're right. You said it. They don't. They don't really want to kill the majority of the time. They just. I think that that they want people in the woods when you when you have a circumstance like that video. They just want you out of their out of their area. You know. They they were going to the easiest source of food, this guy's chicken coop, and yeah. they would grab his chicken. They would the the door is an easy door to open. There's like a it's just a a wooden door it with a latch. You and I'm both mad. It yeah. doesn't matter what kind of door it is. If they want in, they're gonna rip that door off the hinges. Right. Even right. if it's a metal door, they'll rip it off the hinges. Yeah. These things are incredibly strong, and their claws cut through steel. Yeah, sharp enough to cut through steel. I've seen that. That shit boggles my mind. All right, all right. And then he finds the deer. They made no head, but the head's yeah. there, decapitated. Body is, you know, no, no animal can do that. No, I had a subscriber. No animal. You. What are you say? No, go ahead. Now, I had a subscriber just recently, and I haven't shared the picture because of YouTube's. Uh, policies and stuff and guidelines yeah um there was a and i thought immediately about that that's the crazy thing about that video is because there are so many things that point to that being a dog man that really just <laughs> the this guy from down in tennessee sent me a photo of a mule and the body was 20, 30 feet away from the head. And what, oh, wow. whatever. I didn't know those things are tough. I'll, I'll text you the picture so you can see it. Um, All right. Whatever, whatever yoked, <laughs> it's almost, it could be a squatch. You know what I mean? Or it could be a dog that's, man. That's One of the too. two. Cause it it that's looks awesome. like it pulled it looks like it pulled the head, but I'm thinking more of a dog man because of of the tear marks. But squatches can do that too. Yeah. But there's spinal cord attached to the neck. You know what I mean? So if there's a good two or three feet of spinal cord attached, so it's almost like it went and pulled it right out. But I'm like, 
dude, nothing. You know the amount of force it takes for you to decapitate something? Yeah. Yeah. Especially a mule. I mean, <laughs> yes. or a deer. And I mean, and just a deer alone, the speed that they can run, something very fast would have to, you know. So that points to dog man. You know, there's just a lot of a lot of uh, things that line up to that being a dog man. But yeah, I'm glad that you saw it. I'm glad that you saw that video. <laughs> it was definitely a cool video, and um, you know that those. I hope because um, it's gonna he's gonna have a run with that thing. That yeah. thing hasn't stopped. It's gonna continue to um raid his chicken coop. Yeah. And he's gonna it's gonna be one day he's gonna be out there and he's gonna actually he might not see it close up, but he's gonna see it and know what it is, or not know what it is, but he'll see it and realize that things in this world ain't what it seems. Right. Right. And it only makes sense that it'd be a dog man because it's in Michigan. And he said, federal land. And I'm like, federal land, federal land. I'm, he's got to be up on the upper peninsula. And I'm like, yeah, definitely a yeah. dog, man. You know, it's just, wow, blows me away. But I'll, I'll text you that picture. I got to figure out a way of um, sharing that photo with people because, I mean, that, that photo alone just shows that you know, whatever did that to that mule, it, humans can't do it. I mean, be able to change the format on it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe do it in the community section or something, just on a on a on a post or whatever. But you know, even a human couldn't do it. You know, like it's just yeah. even if it was dead. Yeah, how are you gonna? How it makes no when you see the vote when you see the photo you'll know what i mean because you're going to be like yeah there's there's nothing no doubts about that that was caused by something much much more powerful than a human being or any other kind of animal that's native to the woods that's in tennessee yeah so but my last thing um was I had the question to ask you about the uh, the the phone calls that you were receiving? So were they like? I know they're bullying. Obviously, they're bullying you. But I mean, can you? They're attempting to bully me. Right? Can you give me like? I mean, did they sound like? Hey, uh, you know, we're gonna come for your family. This, this, and that. Or, you know, how did it sound? Was it just? I mean, that's when they called me to ask. They asked to talk to me. I was like speaking. It was like you was up in such and such, and we know that you have certain evidence. And if you release these evidence to the public, I can make you and your family disappear. Mm -hmm. And then I hang up. And then they called again. Somebody else was like, "You need to turn in whatever you have, or one will get for you and your family." Hang up. Another one calls. We're outside your house. We're watching you right now. I hang up. I look outside. Nobody. Well, supposedly nobody's there. So right. And then uh, I end up um, just changing my number and get myself enlisted. So scare tactics completely. But like you said, I couldn't see anybody. But you know, someone's probably there. Yeah. So. So I'm like they'll they'll do anything say anything but they got the wrong one yeah definitely they they really shouldn't they should know if they know you're you know what i mean they've obviously know who you are by looking into your background they should know you know the amount of the amount of crap that you and your family have been through in taylor you know so it's a. Uh, yeah, it's like because I had to drive. I had to drive past what you call it to get to a certain area. So, yeah. so it felt kind of weird going back there. I'm sure it did. I'm and sure then it just, did. just <laughs> funny. The, the, the messed up thing is, I go back there to see the same thing that scared me away. Right. You did you know when you were when you were heading down? You had to. You had to have known. You know, like you just in your. In your heart of hearts, you, you're like, you know, I, I'm going down here. This is... I already know I was going to see one of them. I know it. Yeah. I know I was going to see one of them. Because, yeah, these are one, th- one thing I learned, Joe, that these things, you're sent. 
this set, let me see if I can explain this in a way a lot of people can understand. But these, what I've learned, what these creatures is, they don't forget a scent. They can hold on to a scent for decades. That's how good they are with scents. Another thing is, your, your scent, it's like uh, putting a whole bunch of different fragrances in the air, right? Mm -hmm. And they can pull a certain fragrance out the air, no matter where it is, because scents travel a certain distance. And the way how they communicate, one could pull the scent, like, oh, okay, they, 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 they communicate with each other. Like, oh, this is in the area. That's how they know where to go and who to mess with. Like, when you see a group of them, they know who they're going for because they communicate and they let them know in their way who is the target. Right. And I think once, I, honestly, I think once I stepped foot in there, like, uh, they, they knew I was there. It's, it's, they have a sixth sense for this step. Because you, you can't put normal logic on creatures that, that exceed normal boundaries. Right? So... Yeah. Things that you think a normal animal can do don't 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 classify these things as normal, or what a normal animal can do. They because they're capable of a lot more things. Have we seen? We've seen all the stuff. Not let me take that back. We've seen most of the stuff that these things are capable of, and they're like, how the hell do they do that? But you can't put human logic on this thing because they're not. They 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 don't go by human boundaries. No. They go by a, a whole, they're in a whole nother class of their own. So the minute people start to realize that is the minute that they can accept it and, and, and move accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. So I knew once I stepped in there that I, I was a mark man. I knew I was a mark man. Hmm. I'm glad that your friend was, funny, I'm glad your friend was okay though. You know, I mean, I, I and that's just, uh, Sheer luck. Sheer luck oh, yeah, of honestly, having a fire I, I went there for recovery. Right. Right. Sure. I, like, I told, like, when, um, I'm, yeah, don't get me wrong, like, when we, we hang out, we chill, and we do talk about these, these, these cryptids, I tell them, like, yeah, I tell them soft tissue spots, like, God forbid, you have to shoot one of these things, one of these things, where to shoot them at. And to, to, to freaking increase your chance of getting away. Because, mm -hmm. I would, you don't shoot them in the abs, you don't shoot them in the stomach, you shoot them in the neck, you shoot, and their mouth is open, you shoot them in the mouth, you shoot, you shoot them in between their ligaments, to slow them down. Right. And you gotta hit them in the soft, soft tissue spots. A lot of people go for center mass, chest, I'm like, your chest is damn near bulletproof, man. Yeah. Because of what it does, their, their, their muscle fibers are so freaking thick. Because I've, I've, I've shot one in the chest, and I've, I've seen a bullet just stop halfway in there, man. Shit, they even freaking penetrate. So send them out unless you got a high, super high caliber weapon, right? And then you can do that. But if not, you got to go for soft tissues like necks and open mouth, not their teeth because their teeth are damn near bulletproof too. Freaking, only thing you do might just chip a tooth. If their mouth is open, open, shoot them in the mouth, shoot them in the neck, shoot them in the eye, shoot them in the leg, shoot them in the calves, any soft tissue, well, pretty much anything below the waist that would hinder them from running or walking or wanting to chase you. Hmm. These things are, I mean, I, I just, thinking about all the stuff that you've been through, your dad's been through, your granddad's been through. Oh, my, my dad says he wants to give you a call sometime next week, so. Yeah, give him my number. I'm going to get a day for you. Just do me a favor, text me before he calls so I know that it's him if you could all right, all right. what I'll probably just do is just I just give him my phone and just and make it easy for you to answer yeah yeah or have yeah yeah just maybe be there and be on speakerphone or whatever and that'd be cool have yeah. both you guys there yeah um this is the, I'm I'm so glad that your friend's okay I'm uh I'm glad that you know it turned out to be a different circumstance than you thought it was going to be. Um, oh, obviously, man, I was a wreck driving down there, man. I'm sure. I'm sure. With just time. I was a wreck on the road. I didn't, honestly, I didn't even know. Well, I'm, I was planning. I, freaking 10 hours, I was planning my, my moves. Like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. This is, I went to, 
So I'm like, yo, I, I'm not. I can't do that play it by air. I need a. I need a, a straight a strategy. Yeah, you can't go in blind. Play it by air. Uh, right on. Yeah. So it's like without a strategy, it's like going to a line then with a freaking with stakes um tied around your neck. Right. Hoping for the best outcome. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, we're coming up on time. Thanks. Do me a favor. I wanna uh, I wanna talk to you for a bit after. Um, don't hang up. But one thing that we can learn from this, you know, I and I like to look at encounters and experiences as learning lessons, you know. Uh, and through this experience, you can kind of learn a lot, you know. Uh, one. Uh, Go into the woods with protection. Once again, not a stick or a knife. Um, and, you know, the try not to put yourself in a predicament where you are getting herded into a place, you know, like try to be aware of your surroundings. Be, be very hyper vigilant of everything around you. And, um, you know, if you do find yourself in that kind of predicament, go into overdrive and think of a way of getting out of that instead of going the way they want you to go. Go in a, go in a completely different direction. Go sideways, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's always nice talking to you, brother. You just, you're... Same here. I, um... I was excited when I was excited when I saw your email though. I was like, "Oh yeah, sweet." Cuz I honestly <laughs> literally to like a couple days ago, I was looking at pictures of the the Maryland goat man. I was actually reading the story. Yeah, that's been that's been a lot of um unaccounted reports. Yeah. Like the reports get accounted but it's not been filed. They send people over into certain areas to um just supposedly look at it, but um, it doesn't get to the proper um, chain of command. So people who actually takes the reportings um, just dismiss it. Mm -hmm. But there's been the the um, reports have been a lot lately, and um, there's actually some 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 of them in the areas where people are going missing too. So that's another thing that uh, I'm going to look into, but. Like I said, I don't know anything about these creatures, and I do not know how to deal with it. I do want to help out, though, but I think I'm way, way, way out of my league on this one. But then again, I can't leave somebody that's um, in need, you know? So, right, right. And it's something that I have to um, do, like, a lot of research on. If anybody that has dealt with these things and know how to hurt them or, like, deter them, that would be good information, too, to know, so... If you know how to deal with anybody on your channel, know how to deal with these creatures. I got a couple of videos. You can let me know. Yeah, let me know. But I've got a couple of videos that I've uh, some subscribers had sent in, seeing these things, and uh, it's a whole different ball game with them. You know what I mean? Like a whole different. It's yeah. almost like they are. Uh, you know, I really. Uh, what do you think will win? One of them walking bulls or one of them damn goat man things? I'll tell you. I think a goat man, and I'll tell you why. And and I'll probably get some flack for it. But <laughs> with the goat, with the dog man or walking wolf, Bigfoot, werewolf, I really think they're flesh and blood. I don't think they have anything to do with anything other than flesh and blood. But when it comes to okay. the goat man... There's too much mystery, too much. Demonic. Yeah, yeah. There's just something about them that that really doesn't point to being from this plane of existence, you know? Uh, yeah. There's something very, very demonic about them. And I don't know if it's just because it's a bipedal looking goat and our... our uh, image of the devil but i think that these things yeah. are something totally different and i think they would 
pretty much probably take on, a, you know, probably have the best of all three. You know, um, I really think a yeah, goat man yeah, could, I could see that happening. Because the one you the saw was huge. Very, very formidable. Yeah, the one you saw was huge. Very you said formidable. it was 10 feet tall at least, you know. I mean, and, you know, that with the horns and the, the strength, I, I don't, I really think that there's something really bad, evil to them. And, and with that, I'd have to, I don't like putting biblical things towards dog, man, Bigfoot, werewolf. I, I just, I, I don't. But when it comes to the goat man, it's kind of hard not to, you know. They're they're yeah, yeah, evil. Yeah, I understand that. So, where yeah, do you... you see? The funny thing is, I um, I come to Maryland to get away from these things, but it just seems like I just can't get away from this. Like I'm just, I don't know if it's I'm destined to like freaking have encounters with these things. Yeah. But now I'm seeing different. Before it was just it was Bigfoot and these walking wolves. Now I'm seeing freaking crawlers, goat man. What the hell? What next? Yeah, that's why when you said Jersey your friend's Hill, moving, you know, you're like, my friend's going to move to either Maryland or PA. And I'm like, oh, PA. No, don't go to PA, brother. There's, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you're, going, you're going from a hot skillet to the crock pot right there, brother. You don't go there. <laughs> you know, so, but man, yeah, I... There's just something really, really off with the goat man. Too much mystery. Um, and I don't know what the heck. And I don't think with them, I don't think we'll ever know. I think we are. I honestly think we're getting closer to some origins or at least, uh, you know, whatever with the with the dog man, Bigfoot, werewolf. I think the more that these stories get out there and the more people are aware, um, I think that, you know, we, we may have some answers, not all, but some, but with the goat man, I don't think we're going to ever have the same with crawler. I mean, I just don't think that there, I, 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 my, my opinion of the crawler is a, a genetic a military genetic creation. Man, yeah, that's that's a very strong possibility. Yeah. They try to make what super soldiers or something like that and they they probably messed the thing up and just created some hideous things that they locked up and then some escaped. Yeah. You know. Or like you said, super soldiers, but you know, like with Dolce, uh the government was working with aliens there. Who's to say these things weren't super soldiers for the aliens? You know what I mean? Because cause yeah. think about their appearance. <clears throat> their, yeah. their appearance is very alien-like. and uh, That is true. I'm not just saying outer space alien because, you know, who knows where aliens come from. They're just, that's why they're alien. They're, they're not from here. So, <laughs> but... Anyway, brother, it was awesome having you on. Do me a favor. Don't hang up. Um, I'm glad that you called. I'm glad that your family is doing well. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to your dad. So please let him know that I'm looking forward to talking to him. Nah, no problem. What the? All right. Is there anything you'd like to say well, before we end this? Of course. Um, I'd like to thank my, my dog man family. Um, well wishes to everybody. Hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Like there's some people that might not believe in these cryptids. Um, these cryptids, they might think it's a hoax or whatever. And that's fine. You know, you're entitled to your belief. But yo, just take take the information, enjoy it, let it sink in. And God forbid you're in a situation, but like, oh, I listen to this, and it seems similar to the situation I'm in. So that can help you out, whether it's real or not. Who knows? God forbid. God forbid hopefully, you never make it into a situation where you you have to rely on the information that you hear here. Um, hear here. So. Stay vigilant. Um, if you're walking, if you're doing your hikes, whatever, listening to music, one and out, make sure you have some kind of protection. If you don't carry a hunting gun, try to carry like a bear spray, mace, because that messes with their senses. You know, not, you know, it's not only um, these dog man things that y'all call or 
Bigfoot or crawlers. You also got them with men too, humans. So just just watch your back, stay safe. All right, guys, I am looking forward to having that new interview with Luke. Um, you know, his family has endured a lot with these walking wolves. His grandfather uh, being savagely attacked in their own property, in their garage slash barn. Um, himself being attacked. It's just been, his his life has been just full of turmoil because of these creatures and living in Taylor, Mississippi, just on these walking wolves kind of trail systems that they, they created to not be seen runs right on his property. Unbelievable. Guys, thanks for supporting this channel. Your support is what makes this channel special and what continues to make it grow and go. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their life someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless you all.